Hello everybody and very welcome to this Trend 2021 Plus Forecast. When I came this here mo this morning, uh, I was kind of a little bit disappointed because I felt that there's no reason to give a presentation here because this area is exactly what I will talk about today. So Frederick has done a fantastic job, not only to put and bring colors into our lives, but especially identifying the trends in what directions our color preferences are heading. Just looking at this effect, and you will understand why, all of these effects, I will talk about this today. It's amazing, amazing how precise this observation is. We will talk about color and trends today. One of the most fantastic and interesting things to address. And I think many of you probably have heard this before, but one of the very important things about understanding what a color trend is, different from what other trends are, is that color trend is pure psychology. Other trends, when you talk about material, you talk about new things coming out, we can create trends based on something new. But there are no new colors. All colors already exist as phenomena. We have already seen the colors since we were born. So identifying color trends is identifying our psychology and in what direction the drivers and the things are pushing our psychology and what is happening on our planet, which makes this super interesting. And this is why we address so many global things, because global things affect us and it changes our psychology and our preferences and ultimately what we prefer in color and in design. In 2019 forecast that we talked about two years ago, we talked about an awakening becoming conscious, the first little step of waking up and finally understanding that something has to be done on this planet. We talked about survival because suddenly we realized what we have to do things to survive. Last year, trends for this forecast for 2020, we talked about the new conscious world. A new consciousness suddenly waking up driven a lot by the Generation Z, this new generation of young people being so conscious about things that are happening around us. When we began the forecast for 2021, this came up. It was one of the most difficult years to forecast for 2021. Why? Because there are so many big things happening out there. So many big things that if it goes this way, it would completely be different if it goes that way. Ultimately, we realized that this question mark of really that we don't know what will happen is the major driver in our preferences, our psychology, and ultimately in our design. Right? One of the things, and the fundamental primary things that is driving most of us today is the climate change. Right? Uh, we learned a new word, tipping point. 2020 is a tipping point, it's kind of decisive. Whether we go this way or that way with our planet, right? There will not be any solution. This world met this girl. When she began, she was 15, she today she's she 17. And she addressed the world. But the interesting part of Greta Thunberg from a psychological perspective and understanding trends is that she fills a role that we had expected, we had wanted and searched for so many years. In our trend forecast, which was extremely interesting in the past, we have talked about climate change, we have talked about the new feminism, we talked about Generation Z, faith, we talked about superheroes. We need powerful people to grab onto. And suddenly this girl sits outside the parliament in Sweden and she kind of feels all of these things that we have been talking about for years. 
a fantastic 16, 17 year old girl is now taking the role as one of the leading characters or features of this planet's future. It is so interesting. Greta Thunberg talks a lot about facts. Listen to the facts. And here is one of the main issues. Facts is one of these things that we need to address. So here comes the big question mark. And I think when we look at what is happening, for, for example, in America right now, when we listen to these guys, they always refer to facts. Both CNN and Fox News, they sit down and they refer to facts. And they are, the message they are saying is completely different. It's so different that you cannot even recognize but they have based themselves on the same facts. And this is one of the things that, another word that we learned from, and a lot that has to do with our preferences in design today, or what I will introduce you, it has to do a lot with polarization. Facts, we learned a word some years ago called alternative facts. Researchers today talk about that the, there is a gap, growing gap between my generation, 50 plus people, and the new generation. Because we don't know what to do with facts. We have the facts, but we have no idea what to do with it. While the new generation growing up, they see the facts and they say, we know exactly what to do. And this is growing. A very important thing to keep in mind. There are big, big differences here. We traditionally are the decision makers. But the new generation, which is a very pushy generation, the generation Z and these new people are now beginning to protest and say, begin doing things. Things have to happen today. So whether it's the protest for equality for between sexes, climate change, democracy, or even a bowl of lettuce, the new generation is now protesting. And we're beginning to hear what is happening out there. We have talked about the new generation. We talked about the new feminism. And this is, it's so interesting to see what is happening. We've talked about this for years. There's the Prime Minister of Finland. She's 34 years, 34 years old. Woman. Sweden is actually the only country in the Nordic region right now that has a male Prime Minister. So the new generation of decision makers are women and they're young. This is so interesting because this is something that will influence our way of thinking and behaving on this planet. So, the thing here that really provokes or, or gives us or let, affects us a lot is that we want to understand what the real truth is. If there is a fact, what is the real fact? What is the truth? We want to understand the truth. And this is kind of the basis of everything that is happening. We need, this goes beyond only facts on a paper, because we see an enormous increasing need to understand ourselves. An increasing need to understand things that we cannot see with our eyes, right? In this world of change, another very important factor to always address is entertainment. The Romans, and you know this probably, they established the Latin words of panem and circenses, bread and circus, because we human beings need entertainment and we need to eat. It's like escaping from reality, right? So they had the glad gladiators, right? Then Hollywood was created, gave us all of these fantastic Hollywood movies, and then came the soap operas. We had reality shows now, and we have social media so we can escape. And there's another thing happening right now. I will talk about this. But this, what we, what we talked about la last year, was the welcoming of the new entertainment into our lives in terms of artificial intelligence, merging with our human intelligence. <laughs> so with this kind of digital era, pushed a lot the blue and the greens, and you know that blue 
a lot of people today talk about lose something that we addressed a long time ago. We are now coming into a new kind of entertainment sector, which is quite fascinating. And I will tell you why. Virtual reality, the game as a game, it began as a game. You put on your glass and you go into this virtual world of gaming and everything. Today, the virtual reality is an escape from reality into a virtual world that we know 100% is not true. It is fake 100%. But we create today a world that looks real. We follow bloggers, fashion models, that have millions of followers. People that don't exist, but they look like people. And they act in worlds that don't exist. And we follow it. We know it is completely fake, which is comforting. And that feeling is important. This world, virtual world, is pushing a color area, which is leaving now the, the, the blue and the green of the artificial intelligence into a more sweet world. If you look at the colors in this area, it is pushed a lot by this era. If you look, go to South Beach, by South Beach in Miami, you see all of these buildings of Art Deco. This direction is extremely important right now. The pastelish colors, number one. Number two, what we call color blocking. Because as our psychology tells us that 2020, this year, things have to happen. Our feelings are the same in design. We are not comfortable of seeing a color. We want to see things happen. We want to see many colors together. Preferably pastelish. And here I would love to do the first parallel, something that we have identified that is super interesting. And that is comparing that we're going into the 2020s with a lot of similarities to the 1920s. It's not only Art Deco and pastel colors. It is a post-war mentality of luxury in design. It's extravagant design. Going to the extremes of experimentation. Color blocking, right? Saying in the 1920s, super important now for the 2020s. We need things to happen. We pushed another thing, going back to what we talked about for this year, is the new masculinity. What well, we pushed for the first time two years ago and began developing this, the feeling of having these colors together in as a concept. We talked a lot about the yellow, which still remains. The red is coming back strongly. We talked about the, per the, sorry, the pink and, and the light blue combination, but all of this together as a block was important. So this pushed a lot, and what we see, color blocking is coming. And now, remember what I told you in the beginning, look at this, look at this effect of this pedestal that Frederick has designed. This pinkish, bluish, overlapping, multifaceted, and this is exactly one of the major things that most of us that do color trend forecasting are talking about. Super important direction. Going back, because this is being pushed now by the digital, the virtual world, and I have to address something also that we have, that we have identified. Because all of us talk about the importance of the digital world. Everyone, everybody wants to digitalize things. But we see something different. Like most of the cases when something is pushed very much, there is always a response, a reaction to this. In 2002, there was a movie called Minority Report with Tom Cruise being presented when we learned something new. I don't know if you remember the movie. We do all, all of this began to like this, right? Steve Jobs introduced the iPad in 2010. And suddenly we learned a new word. Swiping. Today, everything is about swiping. And if you're in a digital world, you need to swipe things, right? Even dating is about swiping today. If you swipe to the left, 
Now, if you swipe to the right, yes. Big movements of very unhappy men, specifically, feel a little bit angry because they always get swiped to the left, which is quite extreme. Have you been to a public toilet lately? All about swiping. You go to the toilet, you stand there and you try to make the toilet flush. You go to wash your hands and you try to find the water. Get the soap. Dry your hands. All about swiping. And many times, so frustrating. And this is something that is so interesting. This is from the, the uh, airport in Seoul, Korea, South Korea. <laughs> they put big, big, big signs, push the button, stop swiping. So one of the things that we have identified, which is a complete polarization from the digital era, is that we want the analog era. The button is back. But well, like we say, the analog is back. And that has to do handicraft things, things that we can do with our hands. We really, this movement of leaving the digital and entering the analog, handmade, things that we can understand and see how it is produced, is super interest, important right now. Which goes hand in hand with our sustainability that everybody talks about. If you're not sustainable today, you just leave the market, right? Everything has to do about sustainability. A lot has to do of design for smaller groups. It's not so much mainstream. Somebody mentioned earlier today that design for specific and need, needed groups, very important. Elderly people, handicapped people. We want functional design, or what we call human design, which is very important goes hand in hand with sustainability. This IKEA where they design curtains that purifies air, which is one of these things, because today in many cities we cannot breathe anymore, right? We talked about, in, in the last year, we talked about shades of incognito, like one of the big, big, big things happening, super interesting, that it goes, it's a consequence of the sustainable human design thinking, right? This is super interesting. We launched last year Evolving Eclecticism. And I think every session I go to, to colors and forecasting and trends today, everybody talks about eclecticism today. Eclecticism is some of the things that are super important, that we see on the market, and we need recycled, vintage material, together with hyper-modern things. Put everything in a room, there are no rules anymore. Just take everything you like, sustainable things, recycled things, put them together. Perfect illustration of what is happening today in the design world. Our preferences. We want to be a part of the nature. We want to welcome and embrace the nature. That is super important. And all of you know this, right? So we have learned a new word. Or well, I did at least. Sorry. Biophilia. Heard about that? Biophilia and design, interior design specifically, is one of the key words. It's bringing the nature into our homes. Make our homes and spaces a part of the nature. It doesn't have to be plants. It can be flowers or plants on the wallpaper or something. But we need and we want to be a nature part of our, our living. It's a question of well-being. Here comes another parallel to the 1920s post-war, after the First World War. This is one of my favorite architects, Frank Lloyd Wright. He was crystal clear in his design, artistic design. Bring the outdoors in, biophilia per definition. So here's another parallel to the 1920s, post-war. We want to be more human, more closer to nature, super important. So today, we talk a lot, a, lot, a lot about sustainability. We talk about bringing the nature indoors, vertical gardens, biophilia. We talk about material. I heard something on the radio this morning about material that preferably grows very fast, like bamboo, natural material, rattan, plywood, jute, all of these natural materials, super important, right? Pattern misting and eclectic styles. And here's the thing. Remember I talked about polarization. 
because we, at the same time we have all of this consciousness about sustainability, we see a growing trend to the other extreme. The same as in the 1920s post-war. We need to feel that luxury is a part of our lives. Okay? So what we also see on the market a lot is gold accents, black accents, you see matte finishes, velvet, all of this material makes us think marble, that it's luxurious. Super luxurious, right? Geometric shapes. We pushed a lot of these colors that belong to this in our trend that we call neighbor in 2019. So the roaring 20s, ladies and gentlemen, is back. That is a very important conclusion that we came to. And there are so many similar things that we see happening on, out there when, it, when you compare things. In the 1920s, everything was round. It was luxurious and round, right? Today, everything is luxurious and round. And I spent a couple of, some weeks ago, I was in Cologne to give a lecture at the furniture fair IMM. And I went there and I went there and I was like, Amazing how round everything is. Fluffy and round. Super interesting. Luxurious things. Keynote. Rolls Royce increased the sales 25% last year. 25% of the most expensive car in the world. Isn't there a clear indication that we need luxurious things? But there is another thing that is very important, and I work a lot in China, in the new continents. These countries, Asia, China, Middle East, Africa, Latin America, that have not had so much access or money before are now growing. And for them, luxurious items, super important. And they're pushing new design because what we also see, which is also very important, that national design going back to your roots. So you have design from Latin America, from Africa, from China, from Asia, from Middle East, that they want to show the world and share. And much of that is super luxurious. I don't know if you've seen this. You know Pablo Escobar, the drug lord from Colombia, is dead. His brother left prison a couple of years ago. This has become a huge thing. He started his own company. He now launched the golden foldable smartphone. Picking up, really, picking up competition directly with Samsung and others that are designing the same thing. This is pure gold and is marketed by naked women only. Correct? No, it goes completely against everything we talked about, the new feminism, all of these things but it's becoming super important. And the thing is, for your Swedish people, you have this other girl that I think is also a super interesting phenomenon, Bianca Ingrosso, blogger, super uh, famous here in Sweden. She sells makeup, and she uses a lot of sexy girls to promote, which the uh, Swedish PR or public, or whatever it is called, in, uh, said, this is, you cannot do this, you have to stop this, because this is sexist, it has nothing to do with your product. And she said, nah, I want to continue. That's my decision. <coughs> it's a sign of the extremes again, of a polarization that one is pushing the other to become more and more extreme. In October last year, this campaign was launched by Dior Rimowa. Super interesting color direction. Really note this. Fashion because this is the next step. We see going more neutral, more whitish colors. We see the light blue. We see an accent dark blue color over there in fashion. Super interesting. They make reference to a car, the DeLorean car, Back to the Future, you know, 1984 car, which is really not a very beautiful car. In November, this comes up. Mr. Musk presented a new Tesla and the world goes like, what? Remember, we live in a round era, luxurious, fancy era. And suddenly he shows a tank. 
It's like an uh, apocalyptic design, right? But the interesting thing is that immediately the word picked up. Lego launched a new revolutionary car. Cool, right? But we see architects and designers tagging on immediately. So one of the observations that we saw is this actually the end of the round area because everything has become so round that we long to go to the other extreme. And once again, polarization, extremes. So we have these opposites. We have digital analog, reality and fantasy. We have feminism and we have sexism. We have collectivism, individualism, nationalism, globalism, urban countryside, sustainability, luxury, young, old, and we have the truth and we have lies. And we embrace all of this and think it's nice. So I did this. You know, actually what is happening is that we have digital analogies, we have real fantasies, we have feminist sexism, we have collective individualism, we have a naturalist globalism, we have urban countryside, sustainable luxury, young oldest and true lies. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the age of the true lies. This is what 2021 plus is all about. Our team to do this, we began in Milano together with a fantastic team from Italy and Baula, Laura Perryman from UK and Latika from India, all color trend forecasting experts, fantastic people to work with, and amazing how much we agreed on the things. And our team at NCS, of course, did this. So, before I present what our forecast is, and you come to the core of everything, just some things to think about. To be able to forecast what will happen, we need to understand what's happening today. That relation is the most important thing. And that is, has to do a lot that we have to do color trend forecasting rational, and not only a fluffy intuition. It has to be documented and real, because identifying real color trends can be the difference between a complete failure and complete success. Because keep in mind that color cells, and like color marketing group says, the right color cells even more, right? So I want to address, and this is the commercial part, right? If you don't know NCS color language, learn. That's free, it doesn't cost anything. Just learn. Because to be able to make rational decisions in your design, in your color choices, you need to understand what you're doing. And it's not all about, oh, I like this color. Describe the color, pin it, understand what you're doing to make a rational decision. That is one of the main things to be successful in color design. When it comes to color trend forecasting, it also gives us an opportunity to analyze existing colors and understanding in what direction they're moving, right? Because it's all about movements, both in hues, but also nuances. Many times, color trend is not if it's white, or if it's black, or if it's red, or green, or blue. It's more about in what direction are they becoming paler, stronger, darker, what direction are they going? Right? So last year, for this coming years, we see that the very chromatic colors are disappearing. We don't want so strong colors anymore. It's going to be getting better, more and more neutral. We have a huge overweight of blues. Blue for this year was forecasted to be one of the big hue areas, together with yellow, which is the opposite color, right? We follow the psychology, we follow research, because the thesis is that it's a repetitive cycle. Remember what I told you, that color trend forecasting is color psychology, it's understanding psychology. And it has been proven, we follow this very closely, that it is a repetitive cycle. We just need to understand where we are and which are the next steps for our color preferences, right? Now, let's look at the trends. And allow me then to introduce you to trend number one. That was a long intro. Trend number one is talking about what we addressed earlier now in the introduction, about what we call the new form of distraction. 
the virtual world that we go into to kind of escape is pushing these very pastelish shades in a very sweet, tender fantasy that we need to have, where we know everything is fake. It is fake for sure. We don't have to question it, but we can feel that it's real, but we know it's fake. So it's a kind of comforting feeling, right? Has to do a lot with these effects. Multifaceted, a lot of the pinks and blues on whites, pearlescence, very important. Something that happens and makes us happy. So we create a story called virtual relativity. That is story number one, pushing these colors. And once again, and I will repeat this, because all stories, more than ever, is a question of using colors together, much more than using one of these colors. Because the constellation of the white background with the pink and the light blue and the accent dark blue, a mint green that you see outside here, the light purple color, that constellation together is what we want. We want things together. Color blocking, right? So the colors are all of them between R and B, basically, which assures a harmonious combination of colors because they are within 10 steps, most of them. And we know that within 10 steps in the hue circle, it makes it comfortable to look at. And we have them in a similar area in the, in the triangle, in the nuanced triangle, with a dark accent to have the contrast. Because this contrast is one of the main things and the keys more than ever. When things need to happen, we can make beautiful harmonies, but something has to happen. Bing, right? So this is, when you look around, what Frederick has designed here, gosh, I mean, it's like in a nutshell. We are home already. Allow me then to introduce you to Trend Story 2 for 2021 plus. This is a story, a mood, a feeling of hope and search for the truth, the meaning of life. Search within us is not about religion, it's about mysticism, that we address and we embrace the mystic worlds that we don't know but we need to understand but it's diving into our souls as much as diving into the depths of our oceans or diving into a micro world that we cannot see to discover these spots of colors in the darkness. Because it's a movement that we see very clearly, which is quite opposite to this, what we talked about before, dark colors are super important. And the contrast with dark colors and with spots of light, that contrast is growing in importance, right? So this is what we are addressing right now. It's a mystic trend. Addressing, wanting, searching for the real truth. Understanding, finding the light which is represent the truth, right? We call this bio-depth. And it has also to do with materials, biological materials, that we create from natural things, but things that are not so traditional. Maybe we find that in a world in the depth of the oceans or in, in, in the insects and everything, right? So we have a constellation of beautiful contrasts of colors, of dark shades, as you can see, 70 or 60 in blackness. Still chromatic, that is important. And they have the spots of light. This combination of colors, and once again, color blocking. Use these colors together, right? Placed evenly to have a contrast of hue within the color circle, very important. And you have the contrast of dark and light and one mid-tone over there, which makes this a beautiful design of contrast. And contrast for me is one of the most important things when it comes to color design. Story number 
Let me introduce you to this. Remember I talked about national globalism. Nationalism until today has been almost a bad word. Countries are building walls and racism is growing, prejudice and everything. But here is the thing. The next generation, and also when we are feel so uncertain, we need to look for the things that we can understand. What we can understand is our roots, where we come from, our origin, our folklore. And it's also something, we talked about the New Africa a couple of years ago, which kind of first step into this proud new world, of designers that come from new continents that traditionally embraced Italian and Spanish and European design, but now it's not. This is African design. This is Colombian design. This is Chinese design. Right? So what is happening and what we see crystal clear is that we embrace our folklore and we make modern interpretations and we integrate this into our design world. Embracing the colors that most of the folklores already were able to produce, not too chromatic, but with spots as much as possible with natural pigments, but a constellation of colors that makes it feel folkloric. So we create a trend story we call seeds, representing what we put in the ground Seed grew up and bloom to make a beautiful new future, but with the help of our roots and understanding where we come from. In this trend story, and once again color blocking, we also see that red is coming back very, very um, strongly. And this is, we could say, a residue, a little bit of what we're leaving the chromatic area, where everything had to be chromatic, now is much less chromatic. But as we need things to happen still, what we call pop colors have become super important. So even though you have a room that is very neutral, we need a pop, a color there and a there that makes things happen. And red is one of the most important colors now popping up. This is being pushed by folklore and by countries where red is super important. So, and that's why I indicated that red is one of the only really chromatic colors because the yellow shade we have there is still big surface, okay? And the red is more a pop color, an accent. All of the colors in the top side of the, of the color circle, meaning that they're between red, yellow, and green, uh, sorry, and green. None of the colors are blue and green. <coughs> Beautiful contrast of hue. And you have the chromatic pops, light colors, and one dark accent. Beautiful constellation. So this is what we see a lot coming up. Introducing you then to story number four. Have to keep time, track of time also. And story number four, and the conclusive and possibly the most important story to embrace, kind of summarizing everything that we have talked about. It's all about understanding what needs to be done. Because we want to do the right thing. We really want to do the right thing. But to do the right thing, we need to understand what the right things are. We need to understand the truth. Super important. So we want and we embrace the real things. Imperfection becomes perfection. The more natural and the more raw it looks, the more honest it is. So honest design, very important. We take away the blurry moments to make everything clear. It has to be clear, right? 
materials become very raw and raw and raw, very natural. And this is an extension. If you remember shades of incognito, the very neutral shades, we, this is a reinforcement of these neutral shades together with these very brownish shades that are growing and growing in importance, right? So we create a story called honesty. Honesty is a mood we want to feel that I can sit in this space, relax, close my eyes, and, and really feel that I have done the correct thing. I have chosen the right material, the right colors, completely honest, co correct. So the colors are neutral, brownish, not chromatic colors, and contrast of light and dark shades. And if you know the NCS system, you can see this Y60, Y30, Y60, Y50, Y70, Y10. All of the colors are yellow, between yellow and red, which means they are warm colors because there is no other feeling that when you feel comfortable, you have embraced the truth and you really feel sincere and you've done your thing, it's the warmest kind of feeling that exists. So the colors here, even they are contrasts in blackness, in a whiteness, all of them are yellow-reddish, which makes them together, once again, and I repeat this, color blocking, very, very important, these colors together. So, if you compare this now with the color space, this was 2020 forecast, where we saw the movement, you know, retiring from the chromatic area, becoming more and more neutral, very, very important direction. 2021 plus, is this. What is this? Now understanding, and I point this as one of the major directions, and not until we did this plotting we saw this crystal clear, and it was so logical when we talked about polarization and opposites, because it's moving dark, light, and chromatic, and the midtones are disappearing, because we want to see the contrast of it's a crystal clear direction. Color blocking and contrasting design. Now, here comes the second commercial break. Today, we launch this. This is today. This is the color guide for 2021 plus. A beautiful kind of um, pearl scent cover. You have the real colors in the color block. Obviously the stories and the inspirational presentation here. Um, I will give this away to someone here today. It costs, I think it's 199 or something. Uh, it's not here, 199 euros on the webpage. But I'll give that away with a very simple competition that we usually do. You have the opportunity with that. The, the rules here are very simple. If you know the, the, the answer, raise your hand. Don't yell out, don't scream, don't say anything. Just raise your hand. And the first person raises their hand, and if you answer it correctly, I will give that away to you. Okay? It requires that you understand NCS. All right? So I will show you an NCS description. A color. It's a very famous color. And I'm sure most of you, hopefully all of you, know this color. So I want a name of a person. Okay? Are you ready? Raise your hand if you know. Oh, sorry. 199 ncscolor.com. That was the commercial. Yes. I missed that. 1981R73B is a very, very famous color. And we have an answer here. Who thinks it is? And we have an answer. She says, is Klein, and yes, I'm so happy. An applause! <laughs> Congratulations! I'm so happy. I was a quick. I love this because this. Remember what I talked about rational design, because understanding what you're doing is understanding the color, and NCS is the only system in the world you can do this with. Right. 
90% black, 81% chromatic, red with 73% blue. One of the most difficult colors to produce, but a color that every, almost everybody loves. It's the perfect color, in plain blue. Now, you can actually have access to these colors. If you take a photo, you register yourself, you will have a very simple PDF file with the colors, nothing else. So if you want a complete story, you go to the product. But here, I give you exactly 10 seconds to take photos if you want, and then I will stop this. Eight, seven, six, five, six, one, flips, ready. and your time, and I wish you good luck with your color design.